You have your first NHL game with the Capitals. What's the first night like for you? Walking wow. in, walking in, what, what was the, did you do the morning skate? Um, were you nervous? Uh, tell me, run me through it. Well, I just got claimed off of waivers. And uh, bef- before I could even catch my breath, I'm playing against the Philadelphia Flyers, an organization that I knew very well and, and spent all my time with those guys. So that was a very difficult, uh, I wrote it in the book. It was a very, very difficult uh, first NHL game to have uh, when I really dreamed of playing for the Philadelphia Flyers, not the Washington Capitals. But n- nonetheless, that's what your dream is all about, is putting the uniform on for the first time. And at the end of the day, you know, I grew up a Leaf fan, didn't get a chance to play for the Leafs much till much later in my career, but didn't really matter uh, what, what the crest was. But those three little uh, initials, NHL, that's the one that you really cared about. It was a huge thrill, not only for me, but my whole family. What was the first game like? What, what was it first when you walked yeah. in? When you I walked in, when you, walked of... in you sat down, yeah. you sat by your stall, yeah. you sat in your stall, you put your stuff on. What was that? What, what, what was going through your mind? What, was, what, what can you remember? Well, you just stare at the jersey uh, with your nameplate on the back and number nine. And... I talk a lot about my number nine in my book and how it is the hockey number that everybody grew up with, especially with uh, uh, Rocket Richard, Gordy Howe, right? Um, Bobby Hall. Uh, and now I've got an NHL number nine with my nameplate. I, I, I couldn't stop staring at it. It was uh, so surreal at that time. Uh, but it was a, a huge thrill to be in the cap center uh, playing my first NHL game. By the way, I don't know if you know this, but all the number nine, all the original six, all the number nines are retired. I don't know if you know that. If you look it's a hard them. number. It's a hard number to get a hold of these days. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah, he has it in Washington, uh, the defenseman. And I can't remember is uh, the Russian. Uh, or, defense. Is it Orlov? Yeah, Orlov. Orlov has there nine. In Wash, there you go. See, uh, uh, I'm I'm getting a little slow here in the old age. Where's the book? Gotta put the book next to the next. There you go. There you go. The book is undrafted. It's uh, Nick Kiprios. I, I urge you to go out and, and and get it, get it, and and read it. Okay. You, how long did it take you? Now they talk about the game very fast. Even in, even in your day, the game was pretty fast. The hard hitting. How long did it take you to sort of slow down and become comfortable to to really really know know yourself how long did it take yeah you you want to get that rookie season out of the way uh you know prior to that everything's so new travels new uh cities that you go to that you've watched countless times on tv but to get uh to know buildings um you know i from buffalo's auditorium to the boston garden like all those (laughs) Just a huge thrill to go back to the Montreal form, a rink that you remembered growing up with the great Montreal Canadian teams, the, uh, the incredible uh, Canada or uh, Montreal Canadian uh, Russia ser- uh, game on New Year's Eve. I mean, Canada Cups, just a huge thrill in your first year. It's almost as if it was like an out of body experience. By the time you get into your second and third year, Ashley, now you're starting to realize it's a job. And like any other job, at, at, when you're at the highest level, you don't perform, you don't get to stay. So all of, uh, all of that tinsel starts wearing down pretty quickly as soon as you understand that somebody else wants your job pretty quickly. You better not lose it. And then you get traded to the uh, Hartford Whalers. Uh, team that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, you played in the uh, the shopping mall there. What, what was that like for you? I enjoyed it. Again, uh, getting an opportunity to play in the NHL. Uh, of course, it was a bit of a trying time in that organization because they just traded Ronnie Francis and Elf Samuelson and all these uh, these favorites. And you know, it's a small community in, in Connecticut. It's not it's not a big metropolitan city where no matter how bad you're going to be, there's going to be 18,000 fans in the building. That was not Hartford at that point. So we had our work cut out for us. We had a, we had a tough team and and at times an entertaining team, but we just didn't win, but it just didn't seem like we were ever going to be embraced with that owner who traded away all their favorite players. And, you know, it was, it was hard 
it was hard on the players that remained um, when when those fans uh, half of them didn't show up. You uh, had the most uh, penalty minutes that year, three hundred and twenty. That was the the height of your career that year, three three twenty five. Yeah, I I wrote in the book that uh, the only reason that happened is because Brian Burke Burke uh, was our general manager at the time, and he gave away a, a free truck to the guy that uh, hit the most in every game. So anything that moved, I try to run over. <laughs> I was ended that, up was, getting in the penalty box a little too many times. Was that your mantra? Had anything that moved when you when you when you came up from from the from from, from Philadelphia to, to Washington to Hartford? Was that yeah. sort of like anything that had a dark jersey at the time, because you or or a, a, a white jersey that you would hit? I think uh, it was pretty clear early that I was just not going to be able to score like I could, but I can certainly hit. I knew I was uh, a physical player even in junior. I, I didn't mind it every once in a while. I didn't do it very often, but I know I could do it if, if I needed to. And once I kind of fell into that, that role a little bit, you know, Brian Murray really encouraged me. And ultimately, you know, the rest of the coaches knew that I could add an element. I was also fortunate to score 17 goals and I was pushing hard to be one of the few players in NHL history to score 20 goals and have over 300 penalty minutes. Uh, there's only a handful of those guys, you know, including my head coach, I think Paul Holmgren. Uh, but uh, I, I pulled my abdominal muscles and, and uh, missed the last, I think, seven or eight games of the regular season. I would have really liked to have scored 20 goals that year. What was Homer like as a coach? Was he, was he, is he easy going? Is he? No, uh, there's not an easy going about yeah. Paul Holmgren. You saw him play. <laughs> I saw, I did see him play. As, as in, as Big intense as there he'd is. Stand in front of that net, boy. He'd stand in front of that net and wouldn't move. Like, you're gonna, like you're, Jim Kerr. You're going to enjoy a good a good story in the book about how uh, we almost fought in a parking lot on a road trip one night just based on our foolishness of, uh, of uh, you know, our uh, our egos, I guess. That would have been a bad mistake on my part, fighting my head coach. Yeah, they would have shipped you out. Uh, they did anyways. They shipped it out to the New York Rangers. Spent three. Anyway, talk about. Uh, let's go back to Washington. Talk about your first goal. What 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 you remember about it? Joe Louis Arena, uh, with the late Doug Wickenheiser as my centerman, and Alan May, who's uh, now broadcasting for Washington Capital Games on uh, uh, NBC Sports uh, in Washington, and. Uh, Sammy St. Louis was uh goalie. Yeah, the goalie, but it's not St. Oh, I'm drawing a blank. Same St. Uh, Sam St. St. Laurent. St. Laurent. Thank you very much. See what happens? <laughs> yeah. Well, I know. So we're yeah. tied at one now. We tied at one. We, we each could not remember a, uh, yeah. a player or a situation. So we're tied at one now. Now you guys so, are going to a shootout. Uh, it, took, it took a while, though. Uh, I think I was uh, 14, 15 games into the regular season before I scored my first NHL goal, but huge monkey off my back. My parents were in the, this, uh, uh, the arena. They made the trip from Toronto. So every kid's dream scored their first NHL goal. Did you, uh, did your mother say anything about your fighting, uh, Ackerman? <laughs> yeah. I did you a lot. Not cl close her eyes or yeah. not, not want to see what we, what you were doing? I, I talk a lot about that in the book and, uh, you know, a couple of times she actually said, you know, are you sure that you want to go down this path? And, you know, maybe we should stop. I got bounced around a few times out of junior from Kitchener uh, to uh, Mississauga to North Bay. I, I Every time I fought as a 17 year old, I got beat up bad, really bad. And she didn't like it at all, but just wanted to keep going, wanted to fulfill my dream of being on a hockey card one day. And, uh, you know, you have it. Oh, I've got, uh, I got a few of the rookie cards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so she was, she was not, not in game with you playing that physical uh, brand of style. You know what? She was okay. She's, she's very tough in her own right. And I talk a lot about her and, and, um, and what she's made out of, uh, but they were always very supportive, uh, very, um, encouraging in terms of, you know, to stick with it, you know, but at times they were as frustrated as I was, but we found a way to persevere. All right. Then you get traded to the New York Rangers want some toughness. 
They're going to go for the Stanley Cup, and they trade for Nick Caprios. Yeah, and that was... What was it like going from Hartford to New York and where you can get lost? From the outhouse to the penthouse. That's what it felt like in terms of going from a bottom-feeding team to, uh, you know, Broadway. And it was abundantly clear that they missed the playoffs the year before. They made a major change in getting Mike Keenan, and it was all about 1994. They went out there. They loaded up. You take a look at our our black aces at the time. Doug Lidster, Ed Olchick, myself, Glenn Healy came from more prominent roles with other teams. Uh, yet it was all about that one year and loading up and loading up uh, insurance pieces as well. So it was a great thrill to be a small piece to a very big uh, jigsaw puzzle. 